first graders, it is Mrs. Kuiper. We are going to continue reading Dinosaurs Before Dark. This is part of the Magic Treehouse series. It's the first book. And we are going to pick up at chapter five. Here we go. Chapter five, Gold in the Grass. Go, go, said Jack. He threw his notebook into his pack. He pushed Annie toward the rope ladder. Bye, Henry, she said. Go, said Jack. He gave Annie a big push. Quit it, she said, but she started up the ladder. Jack scrambled after her. They tumbled into the treehouse. They were panting as they looked out the window at the dinosaur. He was standing on the hilltop, eating flowers off a tree. Oh, man, whispered Jack. We are in a long time ago. The dinosaur looked like a huge rhinoceros, only he had three horns instead of one. Two long ones above his eyes and one on his nose. He had a big shield-like thing behind his head. Triceratops, said Jack. Does he eat people, whispered Annie. I'll look it up. Jack grabbed the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. There, he said. He pointed to a picture of a triceratops. He read the caption. The triceratops lived in the late Cretaceous period. This plant-eating dinosaur weighed over 12,000 pounds. Jack slammed the book shut. Just plants, no meat. Let's go see him, said Annie. Are you nuts, said Jack. Don't you want to take notes about him, asked Annie. We're probably the first people in the whole world to ever see a real live Triceratops. Jack sighed. She was right. Let's go, he said. He shoved the dinosaur book into his pack. He slung it over his shoulder and started down the ladder. On the way down, Jack stopped. He called up to Annie. Just promise you won't pet him. I promise. Promise you won't kiss him. I promise. Promise you won't talk to him. I promise. Promise you won't. Go, go, she said. Jack went. Annie followed. When they stopped up the ladder, the pteranodon gave them a kind look. Annie blew a kiss at him. Be back soon, Henry, she said cheerfully. Shh, said Jack, and he led the way through the ferns, slowly and carefully. When he reached the bottom of the hill, he kneeled behind a fat bush. Annie knelt be beside him and started to speak. Shh! Jack put his fingers to his lips. Annie made a face. Jack peeked up at the triceratops. The dinosaur was incredibly big, bigger than a truck. He was eating the flowers off a magnolia tree. Jack slipped his notebook out of his pack. He wrote, eats flowers. Annie nudged him. Jack ignored her. He studied the Triceratops again. He wrote, eats slowly. Annie nudged him hard. Jack looked at her. Annie pointed to herself. She walked her fingers through the air. She pointed to the dinosaur. She smiled. Was she teasing? She waved at Jack. Jack started to grab her. She laughed and jumped away. She fell into the grass in a full view of the Triceratops. Get back, whispered Jack. Too late. The big dinosaur had spotted Annie. He gazed down at her from the hilltop. Half of a magnolia flower was sticking out of his mouth. Oops, said Annie. Get back, Jack shouted at her. He looks nice, Jack. Nice? Watch out for his horns, Annie. No, he's nice, Jack. Nice? But the triceratops just gazed calmly down at Annie. Then he turned and loped away, down the side of a hill. Bye, said Annie. She turned back to Jack. See? Jack grunted, but he wrote in his notebook, nice. Come on, let's look around some more, said Annie. As Jack started after Annie, he saw something glittering in the tall grass. He reached out and picked it up. A medallion, a gold medallion. There's the Triceratops. You can see a volcano in the distance, and then he's holding a medallion that says M. A letter was engraved on the medallion, a fancy M. Oh man, someone came here before us, Jack said softly. Chapter 6, Dinosaur Valley. Annie, look at this, Jack called. Look what I found. Annie had gone up to the hilltop. She was busy picking a flower from the magnolia tree. Annie, look, a medallion. But 
Annie wasn't paying attention to Jack. She was staring at something on the other side of the hill. Oh, well, she said. Annie! Clutching her magnolia flower, she took off down the hill. Annie, come back, Jack shouted. But Annie had disappeared. I'm going to hurt her, Jack muttered. He stuffed the gold medallion into his jeans pocket. Then he heard Annie shriek. Annie? Jack heard another sound as well. A deep, bellowing sound, like a tuba. Jack, come here, Annie called. Annie! Jack grabbed his backpack and raced up the hill. When he got to the top, he gasped. The valley below was filled with nests. Big nests made out of mud. And the nests were filled with tiny dinosaurs. Annie was crouching next to one of the nests, and standing over her was a gigantic duck-billed dinosaur. Don't panic. Don't move, said Jack. He stepped slowly down the hill toward Annie. The huge dinosaur was towering above Annie, waving her arms, making her tuba sound. Jack stopped. He didn't want to get too close. He knelt on the ground. Okay, move toward me, slowly, he said. Annie started to stand up. Don't stand, crawl, said Jack. Clutching her flower, Annie crawled toward Jack. The duck-billed dinosaur followed her. Still bellowing, Annie froze. Keep going, Jack said softly. Annie started crawling again. Jack inched farther down the hill until he was just an arm's distance from Annie. He reached out and grabbed her hand. He pulled Annie toward him. Stay down, he said. He crouched next to her. Bow your head. Pretend to chew. Chew? Yes. I read that's what you do if a mean dog comes at you. She's no dog, Jack, said Annie. Just chew, said Zack. Said Jack. Jack and Annie both bowed their heads and pretended to chew. Soon the dinosaur grew quiet. Jack raised his head. I don't think she's mad anymore, he said. Thanks, Jack, for saving me, said Annie. You have to use your brain, said Jack. You can't just go running to a nest of babies. There's always a mother nearby. Annie stood up. Annie! Too late. Annie held out her magnolia flower to the dinosaur. I'm sorry I made you worry about your babies, she said. I'm sorry I made you worry about your... Sorry, I already read that sentence. The dinosaur moved closer to Annie. She grabbed the flower from her. She reached for another. No more, said Annie. The dinosaur let out a sad tuba sound. But there are more flowers up there, Annie said. She pointed to the top of the hill. I'll get you some. Annie hurried up the hill. The dinosaur waddled after her. Jet qu quickly examined the babies. Some were crawling out of their nests. Where were the other mothers? Jack took out the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. He found a picture of some duck-billed dinosaurs. He read the caption. The Anatosauruses lived in colonies. While a few mothers babysat the nests, others hunted for food. So there must be more mothers close by. Hey, Jack, Annie called. Jack looked up. Annie was at the top of the hill, feeding magnolia flowers to the giant Anatosaurus. She's nice too, Jack, Annie said, but suddenly the Anatosaurus made her terrible tuba sound. Annie crouched down and started to chew. The dinosaur barged down the hill. She seemed afraid of something. Jack put the book down on top of his pack. He hurried up to Annie. I wonder why she ran away, said Annie. We were starting to be friends. Jack looked around. What he saw in the distance almost made him throw up. An enormous, ugly monster was coming across the plain. He was walking on two big legs and swinging a long, thick tail and dangling two tiny arms. He had a huge head and his jaws were wide open. Even from far away, Jack could see his teeth long and gleaming. Tyrannosaurus Rex, whispered Jack. We're going to leave off there and we will finish chapters seven and eight next time. Thank you for listening to the story.